Okay, so this first of all to make sure we understand our coordinate system. If you're looking down on your paper, then this way is the normal x-axis, the normal y-axis. But now we're calling that i-hat, j-hat, and then straight up, I'm not sure if this will stay or not, that would be k-hat. And how do you find k-hat? Point your fingers in the direction of i, sweep in the direction of j, your thumb points towards k. Now what if you're looking towards the board? On the board we have it worked out here. Notice, I have i-hat this way, j-hat this way, sweep from i to j, and your thumb points towards k. And notice k is coming straight out of the board. Now which one do you use? It depends on if you're looking down on your desk or looking at the board. Well, now let's do a couple of operations. Number one, we're going to do vector sum. You should know that vector sum means add. So if I start off with a vector is, I'm just completely making up numbers here. These are completely random. And let's say that B vector okay, and that is X, Y, Z. The sum of those, which would be A plus B equals Add all the x's, add all the y's, you could remove the 1 and just have j hat there, and then minus 2 k hat. That gives us our vector a plus b. But what about the magnitude? The magnitude would equal x squared plus, sorry, magnitude squared, x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So Square it, square it, square it. That will be positive and take the square root. So the magnitude would equal 8 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared. And that number gives me 5.5. Now, what about units? If these were all meters, then that would have the units of meters. If they have different units, you couldn't add them together. All right, that's how you do a vector sum. Next, let's do a, a dot product, otherwise known as a scalar product. A scalar product, product means multiply, Multiply vectors such that you get a scalar. This would be like work. Work is a scalar. And work is only parallel components. We have an item being pulled by a force at a particular angle. This would be F cosine theta. This would be the distance it moves. And so the work would equal F D cosine of theta where it multiplied the parallel components. Well, let's do that in IJK now. <coughs> so, this is another meaning of dot product. Dot product is a scalar product. Multiplication, which results in a scalar. Let me just choose, again, two random numbers. And I'll make B. multiply those together as a dot product, written this way. I'm only going to multiply the parallel components. I'm not going to multiply i times j. Notice, i and j are perpendicular to one another. They are not parallel in any way. So i dot j equals zero. i dot k is also equal to zero. So, I will multiply the i's together. The j's together. Plus the k's together.
remember that this results in a scalar. If it results in a scalar, I get rid of all the vectors when I'm done. It turns out that i hat times i hat gives me 1. j hat dot j hat gives me 1, etc. Because they're unit vectors, same direction, and as a unit vector they have a magnitude of 1. This gives me 4 times negative 2, negative 8, negative 6, negative 24. <clears throat> that gives me 14, so that gives me negative 38. Now let's put some units on here just to make it interesting. I hope I didn't, wasn't stupid and did that wrong. I didn't do that wrong, did I? No. <laughs> that happens. Now I multiplied newtons times meters. I multiplied newtons parallel to meters, which means that this is negative 38 joules. Now, you might say, what in the world is negative 38 joules? Negative because it's removing energy from the system. So the object was moving in one direction, and the force was, moving, the force was acting opposite its motion. So that's why it took away energy. We're going to keep this number. Again, notice the i's, j's, and k's all disappear. I'm going to keep this over here and show that I, I'm sorry, A dot B gave me negative 38 newton meters or negative 38 joules. Because now we're going to do, do cross-product. 